So is the imaginary part of QAM modulation real? And this is a natural question because QAM, here we show a 16 QAM constellation, so quadrature amplitude modulation for digital communications. And there are 16 points and there are two axes, the real axis and the imaginary axis. So it's common to ask, what is the imaginary axis and is it real? Is it a real signal, real part of the signal? Well, let's look at this uh, and think of what's actually going on. So these points here represent the cos wave modulated component and the sine wave modulated component of a QAM wireless communication system. So let me say a bit more about what that means. So let's say we are thinking just about the imaginary just for a moment and we can plot here in the time domain an example of, of different constellations being sent one after another, different constellation points. So for example if it was this constellation point first then the amplitude in the imaginary direction uh, would be this height here. If it was followed by this point here then it would go up to this value here and so on, for example, some other values here I can draw uh, for the QAM constellation, uh, choosing different QAM constellation points. So this is an example of a time domain waveform of the imaginary part. We can also do the same for a real part if we look in the real direction, and I'll just do this uh, over here on this graph. So in, if, if that point was sent first, then it would be positive in the real dimension of this much. And then perhaps, uh, as I said, well, this one was sent. So that's a negative one of the maximum negative. So this would be down to here. And then we move between other potential values for our signal amplitude in the real dimension. And as I said before, the real represents the cos and the imaginary represents the sine. So why do they represent those things? What does that mean? Uh, and and in, in fact, as I say, how can imaginary be real? So here we've got the amplitude in one dimension and the amplitude in the other. That's the best way to think of it. So let's think of this as a signal on its own. This is a baseband signal, the way it's drawn here, picking just these points. So what is the Fourier transform of a baseband signal? If we were to try to send this at baseband, then in the frequency domain, we know from the Fourier transform that if this length is a length time equals capital T, then in the frequency domain, that means we're using a bandwidth. It's a sync function because the Fourier transform of the square is a sync function. And the bandwidth that we're using of positive frequencies uh, in the baseband would be 1 divided by capital T. So if we sent T faster, if T was smaller and we sent faster, then 1 on T is bigger and we need more bandwidth. Okay, now let's, so this is the, this is the imaginary component. I'll put imaginary component here, and this is the real component. So it's exactly the same for the real component because that is also changing at the same rate, capital T. So the real component also has a frequency domain. If we were to try to send it at baseband, also occupies the same frequency band. And so th therefore, we've got a problem if we want to send both of these at baseband at the same time. So we have, well, how do we do it? So what we can do is, well, we don't send at baseband. So in QAM for wireless communications, we send at a carrier frequency. And how we do that is we take this signal here and we multiply it by a sine wave. And we take this, sorry, take this signal and multiply it by a sine wave. We take this signal and multiply by a cos wave. Both of them at the carrier frequency. And we know that if you multiply in the time domain, then you convolve in the frequency domain, and the sine and cosines uh, have delta functions at the carrier frequency. So when you convolve, you take this function and it gets shifted up to be centered at the location of that carrier frequency. And so this will be the carrier frequency FC. And of course, the same things happens at, for the negative because uh, that's the Fourier transform of sine and cos. And so if you want more information on the Fourier transforms of sine and cos, see the information in the details below this video.
Okay, so this is after you have multiplied by the carrier. Now, if you take this signal here and multiply by the carrier, in the amplitude domain, you get this signal here. So this is the amplitude spectrum that I'm plotting of this waveform multiplied by cos. The amplitude spectrum of this waveform multiplied by sine is exactly the same. Oh, sorry, this one by cos and this one by sine. The amplitude spectrum is the same for both. There's a difference in the phase spectrum. And now you're using twice the bandwidth, as you can see. So across here, the, the bandwidth here was 1 divided by capital T. That's the baseband bandwidth. Whereas now we have 2 divided by capital T is the, base band, is the passband bandwidth. So in a basic sense, we have two signals, which are two components of our QAM signal, but they are two signals which cannot be sent at baseband at the same time without interfering with each other because they occupy the same bandwidth and there's no way to tell them apart. And they occupy 1 divided by t of bandwidth. But what you can do is multiply 1 by a sine wave and 1 by a cos wave, and then you will be having them both able to be sent at the same time because they're now able to use twice the bandwidth. And they, because the sine and the cos are orthogonal to each other, you can send them at the same time because they are orthogonal. But intuitively, one of the you can see how you're doing this is because you're using twice the bandwidth. So here you only had one degree of freedom, but you needed to send two signals. Now you have twice the degrees of freedom because you have twice the bandwidth. So twice the frequency range open to you, and therefore you can send the two different signals. So that's one way of thinking about it. So this is for QAM, and so indeed the imaginary component of QAM is a real signal. It's these amplitudes here multiplied by the sine wave. And if you're multiplying by the sine wave, you get a real signal. It's an actual signal, which is this multiplied by a fast varying sine wave, which is at the carrier frequency. And it really is a signal, and you can send it through the channel at the same time as you're sending the real component, which is this waveform multiplied by a cos wave uh, at that high carrier frequency. And again, as I say, intuitively, you can do it you can see because you're using twice the bandwidth. Now, what does this mean uh, just finally for uh, relationship to signals which use the, um, the, the baseband and have QAM, such as is done in digital subscriber lines, uh, in, um, in, in modems for um, ADSL and VDSL and so on. Let's just think of that for a minute. Well, just to do that, I'll first of all just make a note about how the QAM works uh, for the wireless. Uh, so what we're doing here, we've just shown for one data stream, but if you were wanting to use multiple carriers next to each other, as is done in QAM, uh, in OFDM, sorry, in OFDM, uh, then you would, this is, uh, we can say, you can have one, let's call it a complex number one. This would be complex one, complex number one uh, for channel one. So this would represent channel one. And you're sending com two, a complex number after complex number after complex number. So uh, that's in the time domain. But now if we just look at one time slot, we could have multiple channels. And this is done in OFDM, and for more information on OFDM, look in the details below this video. But there's a complex number for channel one, a complex number for channel two, taken from each different QAM constellation, complex number for uh, channel three, and so on, down to channel N. Okay, so what happens in OFDM is you put all of these complex numbers in a vector, one for each sub-channel in the frequency domain, and then you do an inverse Fourier transform to get a time domain sequence of complex values which are going to be sent in the time domain. Okay, so this is in the time domain now, and you get a length n vector. Now, these are complex, don't forget. So now we still have this issue that we need to send complex numbers in the time domain. So how do we do that? Well, exactly the same as we did here. A complex number, each number has two values that need to be sent. It's exactly the same as sending here the two values here. We now need to send two values, so we and we need to send it at a carrier frequency. 
So the same thing happens, we multiply by the carrier frequency in OFDM, so FC, so this is OFDM, uh, and this gives us a time domain sequence which is at the pass band, and it will have twice the bandwidth of this base band. So this is, this is just a multi-channel version of what we've shown over here. So to come to the question of the baseband signaling, which happens in what's called discrete multitone, which is in ADSL uh, and VDSL and so on, the VDSL, which are using the baseband. So in this case, what happens is a slightly different. Uh, somehow we've got to find a way to be able to send two values at the same time. And what happens is that in DMT at the baseband, the compromise we make, instead of being able to use twice the bandwidth, at DSL we use the, the, pass, uh, the base band, but we use it for twice the amount of time. So in fact, one way to send this signal, if you were to send it at base band, is you would send this signal first, and then you would send this signal. So you would be using still only this amount of bandwidth, but you would be using twice the time. So again, two lots of resources. One time resource for this signal, another time resource for this signal. Instead of using a single time resource, but using twice the bandwidth, which happens in OFDM. So in this case, what you do is you take your vector of complex numbers, so it's this vector here, and you put them into, you put them in the vector, and then you concatenate those with the time reversed, so I'm actually I'll, I'll put uh, an arrow on this, so if this is your C ve uh, vectored here, down from C1 to Cn, then you put a time reversed version uh, with a complex conjugate in uh, concatenated to get a vector which is twice as long. So this is now length 2n, and then you put that into the inverse Fourier transform, and that will give you a real signal. This gives you a real vector. So now the vector in the time domain here for this is real. So instead of this one here, which was complex and of length n, this is a real vector of length 2n. And this is what happens in DMT, uh, discrete multitone, for ADSL and VDSL. So because you put, form your matrix, uh, your vector in this special way with the complex numbers here and then the time-reversed complex conjugate, when you form it in this way, it has the property that the inverse Fourier transform will be a real vector. And so you can send it in the baseband bandwidth that's allocated to you at baseband, but it takes twice as long. And so that is the way that you're able to send the complex number in DSL in the baseband because you're actually using twice the time resources. So I hope this gives more insight into QAM and what it means to have a complex component, an imaginary component, and the answer is yes, the imaginary part of QAM is real, a real signal. So if you found this video helpful, uh, give it a thumbs up, it helps others to find the video. Um, check out the details below the video where you'll find a link to a web page which has a fully categorized list of all the videos on the channel. And subscribe to the channel for more videos.